Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on question and answer session. Now I hope you know that this playlist is completely for the question which you ask through comments and whenever such question comes into discussion where maybe a practical or video driven response is required. So instead of responding to your comments, I come back with a video based response to your query. Now today's question is taken from equivalence partition which has a very common uh, type of question which is uh, to create the equivalence partition and find out the selected values. So the question here right on the screen says postal rates for light letters are 25 paise up to 10 grams, 35 paise up to 40 up to 50 grams plus additional 10 paise for each additional 25 grams up to 100 which test inputs in GMs that stands for grams would be selected using equivalence partition. First of all, let me tell you one thing here that this question is not exactly written the way it should be written. So that things I think it is quite older than 2011 syllabus because now they no longer write questions like this. But still, even if we consider the scenario to understand how the equivalence partition can be created. So this is the table right now on your screen. Now, the first and foremost thing is to understand how you came up to this particular table in order to understand how this scenario can be converted into the table. So the first part of it says that up to 10 grams, it is chargeable for 25 paise. That means anything less than or equal to 10 gram will be 25 paise. The second category is up to 50 grams. That means beyond 10 gram and up to 50 grams, it is 35 paise. That is 11 gram to 50 gram is the second range plus extra 10 paise for any additional 25 grams. That means right from 50th gram, every 25 gram, there will be additional 10 paise is what you have to pay. So now if you see the outputs at the bottom, the next class will be 51 to 75 because next 25 grams and additional 10 paise is what you have to pay. That is 45 paise. Next 75 to 100 is 55 paise. And of course, there might be any consignments which might be greater than that. So that's the reason I was saying why ISTQB does not write the questions any longer like this because in reality the consignment can be higher than 100 grams as well and they have not included any output for that. Thus this question is not as per the current standards of ISTQB pattern. The last range must have some charges defined for it. Thus we have to consider anything beyond that and what will be output for that. Okay. Even if we do not consider the last part of it, let's excuse that and say that, okay, fine, I'm not looking into that. Let's talk about the first four classes. These are the four options which are provided to us as per the standard question template. So the option says, uh, first of all, the question says which test inputs would be selected using equivalence partition. From the equivalence partition, we do understand that we have to take any one value from each partition. So let's start with A. It says 8, that's on the first range, 42, that's on the third range, 82, that's on the fourth range, and 102, that is in the fifth range. Now, they have not taken any value will be from the second range, that is between 11 to 50. So, okay, keep on hold. Let's go for B. 4 is in the first range, 15 is in the second range, 65 is in the third range, 92 is in the fourth range and 159 is in the fifth range. Now this fits absolutely fine with the expectation what we have. So B actually covers all the options and that could be a right option but still we need to make sure the other options as well. C 10 the first range, 50 the second range, 75 the third range and 100 the fourth range. Now team you have to be very sure that equivalence partition selects any value from that range. Do not be worried about that these sounds like a boundary value and they are asking you equivalence partition. So this cannot be a equivalence partition value. This can be very well a equivalence partition value because any value from a particular range can be picked up for equivalence testing. So C is right now covering only 4. D says 5 first range, 20 second range, 40 second range, 60 third range and 80 fourth range. Now, Finally, we have two options to discuss about that is B and C. Now, when we say B and C, it says that 
B covers all the five partition, C covers only four partitions. But as you see in the question, they might have not discussed about the fifth scenario, but there is a possibility. So first of all, the first point is the question is incomplete. These kind of questions you do not expect any longer right from the 2011 syllabus. They are very precise on giving you the question. Second, if you consider the final range that is 101 grams or greater than that, your right answer is B. But if you ignore the fifth class that is 101 gram or greater than that, then the right answer is C because we don't have the fifth class at all as per the given question. So you must uh, analyze this just to understand if you are able to create the tables out of the given scenario, but do not rely on these kind of questions because these are not based on the current standard of the ISTQB foundation certification. So please excuse these type of questions. If you find that it is not complete, if it is not meeting the expectation or standard of the question or type of the syllabus, then please ignore such questions and you must be smart enough in order to understand and recognize such questions that does that fulfill the needs or not. Now that was the explanation provided to you, but I will not give a right answer here because it is having a conflict depending on the question given. But if you just consider the statement provided to you or from some other source, it is not ISTQB source where you can pick this question from. So as per the given statements, the right answer would be C. But as per the technique, this is not a right question and this is not a right set of options. So anyways, just wanted to give you a clarity on this, but at least at the same time, we wanted to discuss so that you can have a better understanding on equivalence partition to understand the scenario and derive outputs and also know some of the flaws that what we need to consider, what we do not need to consider and how to evaluate certain options. So that's more of a kind of learning other than expectations on what type of questions will come. So anyways, this is all we have got from this particular tutorial just to answer a particular question about is uh, equivalence partition. So I'll be getting back to you with another some similar type of questions whenever we get comments and I'll be responding back to you about the same. So stay tuned for that and keep uh, looking at this playlist specifically to get more questions from the real time and people who ask questions from the comment box. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.